Okay, um, I think we'll get started. There aren't many of us, but um, we may as well um, get things going. So this yeah. is recorded as well. So if anybody um, wants to watch that couldn't make it, um, I will be posting this in the Git Labbers or New Labbers channel um, tomorrow. Um, so hello everyone and welcome to day two of uh, Get Going at GitLab. I am Abby and I'm part of the People Operations team at GitLab. Um, and I'd like to run through, mainly I'll be talking, running through some parts of the handbook um, and also looking at Expensify um, and how to submit expenses and also where to what to do if you're a contractor and you need to submit um, an invoice so we can pay you um, which of course is very very important um, and then Ashton's going to cover how to add um, yourself to the team page um, and also some other bits and pieces yeah. with um, Google and of course if anybody has any questions um, anything they want to ask um, either myself or Ashton please go ahead this is not meant to be a big formal scary um, orientation call. This is meant to be um, for you, to help you. So if we can answer any questions that you have, just wave at me or unmute yourself um, and ask away. So um, I will actually ask if anybody does have any questions because you've been at GitLab for a whole 24 hours. So there may be um, a few things that have come up um, that we can help you with at this point. Um, if not, I will just jump straight into it. Silence means no. Well, silence means go. Okay, cool. So let me just share my screen. Um, okay, so everybody can see this. Yeah, cool. Um, so I wanted to start off by talking about the GitLab values before we go too much um, into the handbook. Um, I think everybody um, will be familiar with the GitLab values. I know they're asked, people are asked about the values as part of the hiring process. Um, and I thought it would be good to just mention them um, as part of this call. So we have um, six values currently. Um, and together they make up the word credit and um, I think you can read there, I won't go through this in too much detail, but um, these are really, really, really um, important and they underpin everything um, at GitLab. No matter what job you're in, no matter what you're working on, it's always important to have the values in your mind when you're thinking about um, talking to a customer or talking to a GitLabber or talking to someone um, externally, they really, really are um, absolutely um, crucial. And there's a couple of things I wanted to point out. Um, one thing is the this hierarchy, which is something that was added um, fairly recently. Um, because sometimes when we talk about values, there are some of the values like transparency, for example, that can be difficult to do um, in terms of if we have a security issue and we need to sort of be transparent about that and tell everybody what's happened and what the problem was, but then we might run into um, other things that might jeopardize our users and things like that. Um, and it's important to bear that in mind. I think um, things that I'm always conscious of whenever I'm doing anything is to iterate. Iteration is a huge one for me personally, and also um, being transparent in the job that I do. Um, traditionally, people operations um, is very closed and not open um, at all. And I can absolutely guarantee that that's not the case here. We do, we are very open and very transparent about how we work um, and also very, very iterative and this whole get going um, at GitLab is very, very much um, an iterative approach. But it can take um, some time to get used to that. And um, I think this page really deserves your attention, certainly in the first week. Um, we don't expect everybody to memorize this page, to know the values inside and out. 
um, but it is a good place um, to start with if you want to understand um, the lifeblood of GitLab, it would be to start at this page. And then um, I want to kind of show you the handbook. Um, we have over a thousand pages of text, which is a lot. Um, and it can be <laughs> quite um, overwhelming, particularly if you're new and you start reading it and you think, oh, there's no way I'm going to remember any of this. That is absolutely fine. Um, I don't know it. No one um, at the company knows the handbook inside and out. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, it is designed to be a living, breathing document, and that means it can be changed. And everybody can contribute to this, not just people at GitLab. And um, I have an example of this. Actually, somebody has done a merge request, um, which I've got it open here. Um, they're actually going through and making changes to it. And this person isn't somebody who works at GitLab. Um, this is somebody who's just seen something and thought, hmm, I'm going to make a change. And that's exactly what we want. That's the kind of thing um, that the handbook is um, based on. It is everybody can contribute. It's not meant to be a set of rules and regulations and things like that. It's up to every single person um, to make it better, to change it, to enhance it. Um, so please, 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 if you see something that you think that doesn't look right, um, you can create an issue or you can just go straight ahead, make a merge request, assign it to anybody, um, me, Ashton, um, Sid, CEO, and, um, you know, we'll merge it. It's as simple as that. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear because sometimes when people think of handbook, they might think of the, the traditional handbook that can't be touched. That is certainly not the case um, at GitLab. So I won't go through all of this, but just I've picked out a couple of key things. Um, you can actually read a bit more about how to use um, the handbook on this page. And it talks about how it's everybody's job to keep it updated, to communicate it, why we do it this way, because reading is much faster, it's asynchronous. Um, you can easily point people to links um, in the handbook as well. That doesn't mean that if you if you ask me a question and I say to you, oh, that's in the handbook, here's the link, doesn't mean you've got it wrong or that I think you're stupid. It's just I'm trying to help you by sharing um, that knowledge. So don't worry if you do make a change and you think, well, I don't know if this is in the handbook already. Just do it. Just do it. Don't be scared. Um, and we want everybody to keep making changes to it because it is part um, of how we work uh, at GitLab. So um, everybody who is at GitLab is always thinking, is this in the handbook? Handbook first. And um, that's absolutely key. If you want to make any changes or you've got um, something you want to communicate, put it in the handbook first. Um, don't put it in a Google Doc, get it in the handbook. Um, and then you can um, announce it on the team call and you've already been to a team call, so you've seen what that's like. Um, it's very, very easy to do. Um, so I would encourage you to also take a look um, at this page if you haven't already. Any questions on that so far? No. Cool. Um, next page I thought would be really useful um, is the tools and tips page and I should also mention if you want to look for anything in the handbook you can just type it in the search bar here and it should come up um, and this page I think is so so useful um, it gives you a quick overview of all the different tools that we use and how to use them um, and you can just have a quick look through um, and pick anything. You've probably got most things set up already, but if you haven't, um, this is the place to come. And I'll just do a search for people operations. Look at that, there's a whole page on people operations. Um, so this is another area that I think certainly in your first week, um, most teams usually have a handbook page about their team, who the, who the people are in the team, what they do, um, any kind of 
workflows or processes um, that they have for the team that they're in. And people operations is no different. Um, and certainly during onboarding, you may want to come to this page to look for specific things or just to find out who to speak to or who to um, ask if you have a question on benefits or um, the hiring process or anything to do with um, compensation. Um, and if you can't find it on here, then there are multiple ways um, of contacting people operations. We have a Slack channel. Um, we also have an issue tracker on GitLab where you can go in and um, create an issue and um, assign it to myself or anybody else in the team. Um, you can also email us. We have a people ops um, at GitLab email address, which I think most of you have probably seen or used. Um, I've been replying to a few people already. Um, but I guess for the most part, um, the other area that I wanted to point out was spending company money. Now, GitLab is, I think, fairly unique in that we really do say spend company money like it's your own. And we mean it. Um, you don't have to ask for permission. There aren't any caps um, on expenditure to a certain degree. But if you want to go on a conference um, or something like that, there is a limit of, um, I think it's $5,000. Um, if I'm wrong, you can find it in the handbook. There you go, something for you to do. Um, but um, you don't need to ask for permission. Um, as long as it's in the interest of the company, if you're really not sure, because sometimes it can take a while for people to get used to that, um, you can just check it with your manager or email people operations um, before you go ahead um, and make the purchase. And I think most of you have probably got a laptop already, a company laptop, um, but if you haven't, you can find the specs listed um, here depending on if you're a developer or a non-developer. And um, we can, people operations can order the laptop for you or you can order it yourself um, and expense it. But there's some other um, equipment listed here as well if you haven't had a chance to look at it. These are just suggestions, by the way, things that you might want to order. Um, obviously, some headphones um, are more expensive than others, but again, if you're not sure, um, just check with your manager um, on people ops before you before you order it. And the other area I wanted to point out was the finance page. Um, and if you're a contractor, um, obviously you won't be put on any payroll, but you will need to submit um, an invoice um, to be paid. And the template is here. And this is a um, Google Sheet. And you will need to make a copy of it, uh, which you can do here. And then you just fill in all of the details. And then to submit it, um, you just send it to the finance email address, which is on that page. And it's ap at gitlab.com. Um, and finally, I wanted to show you very quickly um, the Expensify page. I think everybody's got a login. If you're a contractor, you won't have access to this. You'll have to add your expenses to um, that invoice template that I just showed you. So once you've logged in, this is really, really easy. Um, you should see the inbox page. This might look a bit different for you because I'm an admin, so I have access to everything. I have so much power. Um, and there are kind of two ways that you can do this. Um, so if you're somebody who is submitting a lot of expenses, um, all you really need to do is you can add them here by just doing the expense. And you click on here and you type in the name, date, the amount. Um, you have categories down here as well. Um, and then you just attach the invoice, um, the, yep, the invoice or receipt or whatever. Um, and you can do this from your desktop. I don't have one available, unfortunately. Um, and then once you've done that, then you can save it. Yes, yes. I haven't done anything. So, and then that's that. 
But if you have a bunch of these that you want to do like at the end of the month, say, then you can click on reports. And do a new report. And then as you can see, I haven't added anything to this yet, but you can do. And you see there's my test from earlier, it's already in there. Um, and then you can even add more to it if you want to. And then once you click save, it will pop up with no way. This up here, um, when it's recom. And Wilson is the the financial controller and he handles all of the expenses and his turnaround time is pretty legendary. I think as soon as I've clicked submit in the past, it's taken here about five minutes and he approves it. Um, and we don't have a cut off time for expenses either. Um, but if you are on a payroll, I would suggest that you do your expenses by the middle of the month if you want to get them in, in that month's um, pay. So that is everything. And I realise I've spoken so fast. I do apologise. Um, but if anybody has any questions, um, just shout. So you touched on it with the expenses a little bit, but speaking of payroll, is there a, like a one one pay period deferral before pay starts, or does it start immediately? Uh, look a little it bit starts. Of find that. Yeah, it, it starts immediately. Okay, cool. Thanks. No worries. It's a good question. Um, Okay, in the interest of time, uh, because I'm, I was going to cover Google Drive in addition to getting on the team page, is, is anybody unfamiliar with, with Google Drive? Has, has everybody used it? All right, awesome. Um, I'm not going to worry about that so much, but, but if you're watching the recording of this, this um, orientation and you, you have some questions because uh, um, it's just one of those things that if, if you haven't worked in, in an office or um, in, in a scholastic environment where, where you make use of Google Drive, you may just be unfamiliar with it. And I'd, I'd be happy to work, walk anybody through it one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, but I'm going to jump straight to the team page. Has, has anybody uh, already added themselves to the team page? No? Okay, awesome. Um, so pretty, uh, we've got a pretty tech-savvy group, so this, this may be redundant, but, uh, but bear with me. Um, what, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be referring to uh, this, this page in the handbook at this website locally. Uh, you can see it's just a handbook slash get page update. Um, section 11 is add yourself to the team page. This is the action item on your onboarding issue. Uh, we want everybody to, to basically get, get some experience making their first merge request um, by, by merging themselves onto, sorry, onto the team page. Um, so, so I'm just I'm just going to walk you through one of the ways that you can do that. There are a few different uh, ways that you can you can make edits to GitLab's website. Um, you can use it just directly through the web interface. You can use a standalone um, IDE and terminal. Uh, but we also have a, a web IDE, IDE, and I'm I'm going to walk us through that uh, method because I, I think it's pretty cool. It's actually pretty new. Um, so the first thing we're we're going to want to do is head over to GitLab. Dot com and make sure that we're logged in. Uh, you're probably going to have a whole bunch of projects. Uh, so of course, I've started a few that I, I get into regularly. And this is the one we're looking at. Uh, this is this is our, our primary website, uh, the about.kitlab.com URL. Um, so I'm going to open up that project. And then once I'm here, uh, there's actually a web IDE button that I'm going to click. And that will pull, if you're familiar with using uh, something like um, Atom, it looks similar to any other kind of like desktop IDE, only it's, it's built into the web browser. Um, so in, if we're following the steps about adding ourselves to the team page, uh, the first thing we need is to get um, a, uh, a picture of ourselves to upload. Ashton, me... sorry, sorry to interrupt. Are you meant to be sharing your screen? Oh my goodness, uh, yes. I will do that now. Thanks. <laughs> here we go. Thanks, Abby. Um, so here we are. So the, the team page I'm talking about, of course, is uh, about.gitlab.com slash team. And uh, you can see that everybody should be on here in the entire company. So it's a, it's a pretty large page and uh, growing every day. So we're, we're going to get ourselves onto that page. I'm just going to walk you through the process, and then I'll let, uh, I'll let you 
um, actually take care of the adding yourself. And if, if you need some, some help with that, I, I can help you on one also. Um, so well, let's go back to the web IDE. And I'm actually going to take you back since, uh, <laughs> since I went through all of that before I had shared the screen. So here I am, our www.gitlab-com project. Uh, get into the web IDE by clicking this button here. Pull that up. Uh, now we need a picture of ourselves. So I just happen to have one uh, saved of myself here. And the picture has to be uh, 400 by 400. Uh, so you can actually um, even just do this within Max built-in tools, but you're going to want to, to crop your picture. Um, and then from there, uh, resize it so that it's a 400 by 400 size. So um, let me, let me actually quickly just make a copy of this. And I don't know that I, I want to go too far into all of this, but if I make it relatively square, I can, sorry, let's do this again. I can then just resize it to 400 by 400. Um, I'm, I'm gonna skip over that part, but if, uh, if anybody needs help editing an image, I'm also happy to, to help with that. Once you have the, pic the picture that you wanna upload, you first have to put that in the proper folder, uh, which is under source, and then images. Right, so I'm going right over it. And team. Right here. So when, you, when you're ready to upload your picture in the web IDE, there's this little plus sign next to the folder. Click that and upload a file. You'll find the, uh, the picture that you want to upload. Uh, so from here, for example, and go ahead and just open that. So it's going to do a few things. Uh, you'll see that it now says uh, we have one unstaged commit. So we're going to get to that a little bit later. Now we want to actually find ourselves on the team page and we're going to, uh, to, to type in our name and all that, that information. So that's, that's in a completely different folder. It's under data. And it's a file called team.yml. So it's this one here. And uh, this file is massive because it's got everybody on it. You should already have an entry in this file for yourself um, just using your initials. So uh, for example, uh, Nikolai, if we were to look for you, type in n.7. there. Uh, and that's, that's you, right? Our database engineer. So you've already got an entry in the page. And at this point, you want to update your information. Um, something I skipped over with that, that picture is we need to make sure that the name on the file is your first and last name, all lowercase. Uh, and then it could be either a JPEG or ping, uh, but you have to remember what the file extension you use is. So in this case, it's .jpg, all lowercase. I've, I've found that this page is case sensitive uh, for file extensions. So uh, we're, we're then going to uh, type in our information here, for example. So, uh, whoops, sorry. Uh, locality, and I'm not actually going to save this. I'm just uh, giving you an example. Uh, type in where you're at. Your role should already be in there, along with the slug and who you're reporting to. Your picture you want to make sure that the, the name of your picture is in here and you cover the uh, dot dot slash right there at the beginning. So uh, for example, in this case, it was astronherman.jpg. Uh, your Twitter handle you type in, you don't need to use the at. So in this case, it would just be like Ashton Herman. Your GitLab profile also, you don't need any uh, at, it's just going to be like a Herman. Uh, whatever your GitLab profile might be, you can actually find that if you're not sure. Uh, by going to your profile here. Uh, oh, oh, that's displayed right there. <laughs> um, and then uh, we, we ask that you, you type in a story about yourself and it can be kind of as long or as, as short as you want it to be. Uh, you can actually just re refer to um, somebody else's uh, entry if you'd like to, to see what other people are writing. 
Um, so for example, here we've got um, under Tina, you can see that Tina's written um, a, a, just a short file about herself. Uh, you do want to make sure that spacing in your entry remains uh, consistent with what other people are doing. This, this uh, data file is very uh, sensitive to, um, to that spacing on it, uh, formatting. Let me find you again. Uh, so we type in our story. We can leave it as is. Once you've, you've updated everything uh, and it looks right, um, we can go ahead and uh, we'll see we've got two unstaged changes. Click Commit. It's, you can review the changes that you've made here. Uh, and it'll give you side by side what, uh, what you have edited within the file. Uh, so here's the old one. Uh, red is whatever you've, you've changed or removed. Green is what you've put in. Uh, you then need to stage these changes. Uh, you can do that by clicking the check marks. And then before you can commit, uh, you type in a message. So something like add Nikolai to team page. And we don't actually want to commit directly to master branch. Uh, you're going to either create a new branch. Um, typically, you'll do that, create a new branch and merge. You can type in the name of the branch, like add apply to page, and commit. That will open up a merge request, uh, who you can assign to your manager, or to me, or to, to Abby. Um, and we can, we can go ahead and approve that and, and get it merged in. That's assuming you don't have merge access already. Um, so that was sort of the short and sweet version. Any any questions about that? I'm going to disregard everything we've done. <laughs> undo, undo, discard, discard. Okay. Well, um, again, I mean, like I said, we've got a we've got a pretty tech savvy group in here right now, as is. Um, so I figured that that might be somewhat redundant. But if if somebody uh, is watching this and they're new, or if any of you um, have any questions, please feel free to to reach out to me. I'm, I'm happy to walk walk you through one on one. Um, and uh, that's it. We're just about out of time, so I'm I'm going to open the floor up to to just general uh, questions or feedback. <laughs> All right, awesome. Well, thank you very much for being our, our guinea pig group uh, for our, our two-part uh, general orientation. Um, hopefully you got something out of this. Um, we would love to hear whatever feedback you might have, how, how we could improve it, um, even, even if it's specific to somebody in your role, what's something that, um, that's general about the company that, that should be part of this orientation. Uh, please just get with Abby or me about it. Um, we, we definitely want to make this a better experience for, for people and just to, uh, to, to make sure we're setting the right foot for, for all of our new team members. Uh, but yeah, thanks again. Thanks, everyone. Um, I, one thing I didn't mention, I just realized, is that uh, um, all of you have been invited to, or will be invited to, what's called GitLab 101. Um, and that's with Sid, um, the CEO. And I would certainly um, make sure that you've read about the values um, because he does like questions and um, he's obviously very very um, keen to hear what your thoughts are about the values and any questions that you might have for him so I, that's one thing I didn't uh, mention but um, yes please don't think this is it um, if there's anything um, that you need from either myself or Ashton or anybody else across the company please ask um, and put your questions in the questions channel or um, in an issue, make a merge request, um, anything, anything um, that we can help you with, just, just let us know. And welcome again, and thank you for coming. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Well, Bye. goodbye.